Welcome back to the Super Not Funny Show Reviews. And today I'm reviewing Star Trek Strange New Worlds Season 2 Episode 10, the season finale. It's entitled Hegemony and it's coming to you from Paramount+. Plus. So what did I think about it and should you be watching? And before we get into the review, get down there, hit like on this video. Well, we've come to the end of another season of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. And uh, this uh, season finale called Hegemony is all about a, a colony non-Federation receiving help from uh, a Federation ship, uh, Captain Battelle's ship, in fact. Uh, and we have uh, Nurse Chapel, who's on her way to her, in her internship, uh, when a ominous ship flies in and uh, begins, I guess, uh, an assault on the colony. And that sends the Enterprise on a rescue mission, only to discover that uh, the colony has been, uh, I guess, overrun by Borg. It's not a Federation uh, world, so they can't intervene. And, um, you know, there are people there that they care about. So, of course, what's Pike going to do? Well, you know what he's going to do. He's Christopher Pike, damn it. Uh, he's going to figure out a way around this uh, this uh, line of demarcation that doesn't trigger a war with the Gorn. Uh, we, of course, have seen the Gorn previously uh, in the last season, but we only ever saw the juveniles who pretty much were kind of like Alien, <laughs> you know, from the, the movie Alien. Uh, but they are obviously a, an advanced species with uh, space travel and everything. Uh, so advanced, in fact, that the you know the federation you know starships were not able to actually detect them they figured out a way around detection probably because it helps them to raid ships and then plant their eggs into people um but in this case uh the federation has prepared they got some you know some ways to sort of uh combat these problems not all of them but some of them and so they simply have to get onto the planet to help it you know, to help out the colonists, you know, whoever's surviving, and to get whatever Starfleet personnel off the planet. And so, that you know, we have, you know, multiple things sort of running. You got Pike, um, uh, you know, leading an away team down to the planet. Uh, meanwhile, Spock, uh, Uhura, uh, and um, Pelia, you know, they got to figure out a way around the, you know, around the uh, jamming frequencies and everything that's keeping them from communicating and from transporting you know, on and off the planet. And they've also sort of got to figure out, you know, who, if anybody, has survived on, uh, you know, on the uh, the ship uh, that was... Because, you know, when they arrive in, in uh, into the um, the system, uh, the, star, the Starfleet ship is, you know, nearly, you know, basically all but destroyed. And so this finale has pretty much everything you possibly could want from a Star Trek, one of the action-oriented Star Trek episodes. Uh, there's plenty of, you know, downtime where people can sort of talk to each other while they, you know, are sort of in a tense situation. Um, there's, uh, and there's also the kind of the nod towards the, you know, the original series that had to work on a budget. And so there's always some reason to be on some average american looking town in this case uh this this particular colony they modeled themselves on american you know midwestern for some reason why i don't know why who 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 would want to do that but i guess they did um so we get that uh we get uh you know battelle and and uh pike get more time with each other in kind of this tense situation um Ortegas gets to be in this episode more. That's one of the things, and I, I will say about this season, I am one. I you know I'm most put off by one of the most negative things to me is that uh, Lieutenant Ortegas really was sidelined all season, and I understand because certain characters were given more to do and more of storyline, but there's I feel like there's no good reason to have sideline Ortegas. So hopefully they will remedy that in season three. Uh, but she does get to go on to this away mission, which is, well, you know, a heck of an away mission to decide to be on, uh, considering how everything plays itself out. Uh, the Gorn uh, are, you know, if you saw the original series, they were, you know, weird rubber suited lizard people. In this one, they are, you know, 
terrifying, uh, very formidable, uh, you know, lizard people. Like, they're still lizard people, but they're very much inspired by Alien. Uh, and we see them in, in, you know, several, you know, sort of situation, you know, down on the planet, you get to see a, you know, a full grown one and so the juvenile ones basically, uh, but up on, uh, up in space where you have Spock, you know, sort of, uh, doing a mission to, you know, to basically take out the, the machine that's causing the jamming frequencies. And we get to encounter a Gorn in zero gravity uh, full-grown Gorn in a spacesuit and everything like that. There's a really great action sequence, uh, low gra- you know, zero gravity action sequence involving Spike, Spike, Spock, and Chapel as they take on um, as they take on this Gorn. Uh, very cool stuff. I I, I think uh, it, you know it, it channels the right amount of Alien without it being you know impossible or anything. Uh, I also enjoyed Uhura and Pelia working together because, you know, Uhura and, and Hemmer, that was, you know, that was her mentor. That's the, you know, the person she turned to and she really missed him. We saw that, but I think this was a forging of a link between Pelia and, um, and Uhura, uh, as they try, you know, work together to figure out where this machine was and how they could, you know, possibly take it out. Uh, and it was a, a very star or Star Trek solution to a a difficult problem and just reminding us that you know starfleet has the best and the brightest of course um and besides uh all of that you know you got a you know the the unfortunate you know people were saying that maybe the fridging of captain battelle well we find out that you know she is in fact uh you know has been in uh she's hosting these eggs of these these gorn um, and I was like, oh man, come on, that, I, y'all aren't going to just kill her so easily. Um, but you know, not, not so fast, you know, uh, as we see, uh, we, you know, we see that, uh, this whole, uh, you know, uh, attempt to destroy the machine sort of come, you know, comes to fruition. Uh, there's also something else that was really cool about this episode, especially if you are, you are a lover of the original series. But seeing Montgomery Scott, uh, a young you know lieutenant, uh, and his you know his uh, essentially his engineering ability keeps him alive in the face of a Gorn attack. Uh, he man and manages to get him uh, alive onto this planet. And also shows that, you know, he's going to be key probably to the fight against the Gorn. I really, I think, honestly, I'm I'm not the biggest, you know, expert on Scotty or anything like that. But I thought uh, that it was well done. Uh, I thought, you know, hey, this is the Scotty I know. At least I think I know. Um, And I I, want to see more. I mean, I suspect we are going to see more. And in fact, perhaps this is how scotty gets on to uh the enterprise obviously he's not going to be chief engineer because we got we have you know pelia there for that but i think it's it's pretty certain that we are going to see uh probably well i say we probably are going to see scotty next uh year uh so i'm really looking forward to that um but overall you know i i really enjoyed it uh this episode i thought it was like lots of good action uh, good dialogue, good uh, character movement, all that good stuff. The only thing that <laughs> I will say I don't like is that fucking cliffhanger. That cliffhanger, come on, man! This why are the shows keep doing this? Like leaving you on a, a, a cliffhanger of cliffhanger. Now sometimes you're like, oh man, is that how's that going to be resolved? No, this is literally. You know, a bunch of people kidnapped by the Gorn. They're, you know, and and they're, you know, the Enterprise is getting shot at, and Pike's got to make a decision: do we follow them? Do we not follow them? What do we do? What do we? And then that's just it. We don't ever get anything. No, you know, forward, no backwards. Just Pike frozen in indecision. And man, uh, it, it's it's like it's such a kind of a dagger to the heart because you're just like do something have something you know finished here but no nope, that's not what we're gonna get uh and in fact what makes it worse is we're probably gonna we're probably a good year and a half away if we're lucky if the if the strikes in 
from actually seeing this this uh new season so man it's so tough but um yeah i think that's what it's a good ending to the season it's been a great season all the way around but what a good uh just action-packed and and just very star trek it's a little what else can i say such a star trek uh kind of ending and i'm so looking forward to getting even more of this uh in the future uh, just they, this show is hitting on all cylinders. What well, you know? What else can you say? Star Trek's in a great place. Uh, this is you know, if not the best, one of the best modern Star Trek shows. So anyway, those are my thoughts on this episode. What did you guys think about it? What did you think about what I had to say? Get down to the comment section, leave your thoughts there, and of course, you can always hit me up supernotfunnyshow at gmail.com or at supernotfunnys1 on Twitter. And while you're down there, hit like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. All that good stuff helps to grow this channel, helps more people to see these videos. All right, thanks for joining me. Uh, come back to the ch uh, channel. we got plenty more reviews and podcasts uh, for you to check out. Until then, I've been Mo, your commentary extraordinaire on all things pop culture, and I'll see you guys on the other side of the thread. Peace. Mm -hmm.